What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat, and we are here today with the first episode of our Betrayer Let's Play, which is a fun little first person shooter by Black Powder Games. It's kind of an investigative mystery game loosely based around Roanoke Colony, which for those of you that don't know, Roanoke Colony was a place in North Carolina in the United States, where in the 1600s, all of the villagers just disappeared, and nobody knows what happened to them. The only clue that was left was the word Roanoke, scratched into the side of a tree. And this is a true story, this actually happened. To this day, nobody has any clue what happened to all of the colonists that were there. And I think this game is kind of based on that. I could be wrong, but that's the general feeling that I get from it. By nature, the game has kind of a washed out color. This is what the basic setting looks like for the game. It's black and white like a comic book, and the only color in the game is red. I prefer to play with a little bit of color added just because I have really bad eyesight and very sensitive eyes and so it sort of throws me off. So I add a little bit of color so that it looks sort of like a watercolor painting almost. I prefer that. Others prefer to play the game in black and white. They say it makes it much more terrifying. I'm going to put in a little bit of color. We've also got the game on Deadlier Enemies, which is the hardest setting, and we've got it set so that the bad guys drop loot. I'm going to try and break this up into maybe like 25 minute episodes so that we can get a little bit of the storyline in before we get anything else done. But all that said, let's go ahead and start the game off. New game, off we go. I'm going to, yeah, we're going to restart. That's fine. That's perfectly okay. Hopefully everything works out with this. Alright, and so here we are starting out with that creepy lady zombie face, and I don't know. We're on a little shipwrecked beach right now. This is a blind playthrough, just so those of you who are into Let's Play, a blind playthrough means that I've never beaten the game. I've played about the first 30 minutes just to get acquainted with the controls so that there's not that awkward period of me trying to figure out how to do dumb, mundane, kind of banal things on screen. But beyond that, if we press the E key, we can swing with a knife. That's our melee attack for now, and it appears to be all that we have. We have no legs, we're apparently just like a floating head, that's all that we are. And we've got treasure chests and things littered around, so let's break open some of these chests and see what we can find here. Nothing in that one. In that crate there is a single arrow. I'm noting a little bit of perhaps loading or shipping inefficiency here. Using an entire crate for one arrow seems like a little bit of a misallocation of resources, but you know what? This is not my job. This is not my forte. Maybe the sailors know better than I do. Maybe that arrow was really, really important. That was a musket load. Okay, so we're carrying a musket's load in our hand now. That's fantastic. This mission is off to a amazing start. 23 coins. 23 coins. Alright. I don't know what those are going to be useful for, but well, I mean, obviously they're going to be useful for trading and bartering. But... I'm not so sure that there's going to be anybody on this island. It appears to be a little bit quiet. There's our lovely ship over there. We can't pull a Swiss Family Robinson and swim on out to it. I don't think there's anything on it anyways. Although, in Swiss Family Robinson, they swam out to their ship, which was partially sunk. And they did a little bit of the old pearl diving action. And they found all kinds of good stuff, so I could be wrong. I guess, without much further ado, we'll just make our way on up the beach and see what we can find. Okay, sprinting is done with the left shift. Obviously, we can press the space bar to jump. I don't think Q... Oh, Q opens up our clues menu. I is going to open up our inventory. This game has a wide range, well, a reasonable range of gear from what I've seen so far that you can check out and play around with. There are going to be spooky enemies all over the place later on down the line, but for now, I think we're just going to go for a pleasant stroll down the beachfront. There's a chest over here on this little watchtower with its thatched roof, but there will be no burninating today. There will be no trogdor action. It looks like, I think that little pin down in the bottom left-hand corner that pops up every now and again means that the game is auto-saving, which I think is largely triggered by us finding loot. I don't know, though. It could be related to a whole bunch of things. Kind of a mildly unsettling setting. A little dark as well. What the hell? 
Okay, so we've got a lady in red skulking off into the darkness. Either that or a very thin, small child, but I think it's a lady. Oh, she fired a note for us. Let's have a look here. I do not know who you are or why you've come here, but you should turn back lest you become trapped in this place as I am. Great. Well, I get the feeling that we're like on an island, or I mean, we have no way out of this place other than to go inland, so I don't really think that's going to be an option. But it appears as though we are well on our way to being a trapid. Can we go off? Oh, we can actually get off the beaten trail right now. That's good, because the trail doesn't deserve any further beatings. I mean, the trail does the best that it can, and then it just ends up well beaten, and pretty soon it's got its picture up on the news, and it's just, it, it's a story that leaves everybody feeling less than satisfied. So, please, don't beat the road. 24 more coins. How many do we have? 97. Okay, so that means that the loot is at least somewhat randomized, because the last time I played through this little road... We had far less loot. We only had like 50. And I know that I got all the same chests. So I guess the loot is semi-randomized. I don't know if there's any accuracy in that statement or not. But I'm going to make it nonetheless because I've got a long history. I've got a strong track record of being wrong all the time. Ooh, a bow. Dear sir or madam, I have come into possession of a number of fine items of exceptional quality and indisputable value. As a token of my good faith... I offer you a free bow in the hopes that you may survive long enough to become a regular customer. Arrows will be free for a limited time as well, but beware that they may sometimes deflect from armored enemies, so be sure to carry plenty and recover them when you can. I will put my trust in your honor to leave payment for whatsoever else you choose to purchase. Respectfully, John Howe, Merchant. Okay, so we got a free bow. I don't know what kind of bow we've just picked up, but we could purchase other things with the coins that we've taken on hand. There's a crude charm of vigor. I would assume that's just a charm that makes fart noises every now and again, just to lighten the mood. A longbow quiver. Can't afford that, but it accommodates 20 longbow arrows. And then we can also buy... Alright, so we've got sh a shoddy longbow, I guess. We can't carry it because I would guess that we already have enough of it. So we've got a shoddy longbow... Oh, a cracked longbow right now. It's got 16 out of 16 ammo. Can I come back and loot those? Hold on, let me find out. That arrow bounced off somewhere. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it marks it with red. As with everything else in the game. We can crouch by pressing the control key, so I would assume that given the amount of foliage around here, we're probably going to do a fair amount of skulking and skullduggery and all manner of other activities that begin with skull at the beginning. Because your well-being is important to me, both fiscally and sentimentally, I feel I should advise you that enemies are easy easiest to slay if you can catch them unaware, for their rage makes them stronger. Shots to the head will also inflict more grievous injury than those to the trunk or limbs. So basically anything that's an accessory of trees we want to avoid shooting. Please rely on me whenever you find yourself in need of deadlier implements of warfare. Cordially, John Howe, Merchant. John Howe appears to be giving us the how-to on everything that's necessary on this island. Now right clicking allows us to go into aim mode. Oh. Okay, so we've got a bad guy over here. I don't know if we should take the shot from here or what my best option is going to be. Oh, we got him. Nice. Okay, let's go take a look. It's just some guy out for a walk. We just totally murdered some dude that has nothing to do with the storyline. Like, ah! I'm the local forester, you dick! Shoot him in the eye with pointed sticks! What the hell is wrong with you? That would be slightly humorous, but I don't think humor is the tone that this game tries to strike. A glass bead of one value. I think it just gives us the money. Okay, so we got one coin from that. We don't actually have to sell that anywhere or anything. Under our people's menu. Oh, we've got information. A traveling merchant who barters weapons and equipment. The maiden in red. A young woman in a red cloak appeared along the path from the shore and sent a note attached to an arrow. Okay, and so it saves our notes for later. Stealth attacks and headshots do extra damage. Okay, so it just kind of keeps things... Ah. Alright, a maiden in a red cloak sent a note attached to an arrow. She seems to be warning me away. Interesting. Alright, so it seems to keep pretty good tabs of everything that's happened so far. Can I get my arrow back out of this guy's spleen or wherever the hell we shot him? 
His spleen's not in his head. I just think spleen's a funny word. He appears to be... Oh, he's got like an eye glow thing going on. We can't take his powder horn so that we can powder our noses in the... No, don't powder your nose with the powder from a powder horn. That will leave you feeling quite explosive. The red in your cheeks will become very, very permanent. All treasure chests found. So that's a useful journal update. We know that we don't have to skedaddle around these parts anymore. We've got 124 coins. And I see another flicker of red off in the distance. So let's go have a look and see what this elucidates. What fact we can come to know from this little scrap of parchment here. The weapons you recover from slain adversaries are generally of poor quality, being both feebler and more cumbersome to employ than you may desire. The weapons I offer are guaranteed to do more harm and to do it faster. Well, if I'm a fan of one thing, I will say that it's doing it faster. So, I don't know why he... Were we supposed to pick up a weapon from that guy or something? Let me go back and look. Because it seems weird that that note... Maybe he's talking about the bow, but... I don't know. I've got a feeling like I missed something back here. It's been a little while since I played my... Preliminary maiden voyage in this game. Wait, where did the body go? Oh, it despawned. That's creepy. I mean, it's normal, but it's creepy. I don't see anything else flagged over here with any sort of use. So I guess that I will continue on my less than merry, somewhat morose Edgar Allan Poe influenced way. Rap, rap, rapping as we go about our business. Ah, the ceremonial, the ceremonial loading screen of Fort Henry. Oh, I guess it's not based on Roanoke. I guess it's based on Fort Henry or something. Or maybe it's only loosely based on Roanoke. I'm not so sure. Another map. I would presume that if we go back that way, it'll re-chunk us back into the... Oh, okay, it's called the Forest's Edge. All right, so basically if you look at our compass at the top of the screen right there, it denotes the zone markers, the place where you can zone out by those little rectangles. So that's useful information to know. I'm going to get off the path right now. Well, never mind. I'm going to get back on the path. The path has treasure. Me and the path are best friends. It's because I didn't beat him. A tomahawk. And we could throw our tomahawk with the G key. Tomahawk. Oh, that was awesome. I totally got to do... I want to do that again. Hold on. You hold still. Hold still. Oh, yeah! Right in the lip. I enjoyed that way too much. It was remiss of me not to mention that enemies are more likely to discover you if you are moving. Crouching makes you significantly harder to detect and allows you to move quietly. Use the wind to your advantage. Gus will mask your footsteps, making it easier to run up behind your foes without alerting them. John Howe, Merchant. God... John Howe seems to have a lot of information on murdering fools for being a merchant. I mean, this doesn't seem like the kind of mercantile information that would be useful anywhere other than like a battlefield or like an abattoir. Like, why does a merchant need to know how to sneak up behind people and end them? I am already suspicious of this. You're a mountain lion. And living in mountain lion co co er, country, I, I am dis... Oh, hell no. Oh, balls. Oh no! He's got a gat! Don't shoot at me, you bastard! Hey! Ow! Ow! Weird. Okay, so it spawned me back in over here. We just got ran up on super hard, but we drop our loot too because I turned on loot drop. What that does is it means that when we die, it's kind of like hardcore mode. We lose our stuff and we've got to go back and claim it. So there it is. We got our loot back. All right, so I know to be a little bit more careful. Let's, let's stay on the path because every time I leave the path, I end up getting stabbed in the face by some dude. Well, that didn't work out very well. Yeah! The difference between life and death. One well-aimed arrow. So I'm going to try and stay in Rambo mode for the remainder of this game because it appears as though if you try and face off with your enemies, you will end up in a very, very swift and shallow grave. We got a glass bead of value one from this individual. And just in case you were wondering, we can stab him up violently. We can do a little bit of the old. What's up with these guys' eyes? It seems to be a rather terrible case of pink eye going around. 
People been farting on pillows or something, causing all kinds of health hazards. Well, I didn't really want to die in my first episode, but then again, we are playing the game on its hardest setting, so I get the distinct feeling that there is the possibility that this might be a very, very short stay in Fort Henry. I should probably also recover some of my arrows, which I was spamming in, in a terrified fashion towards this ridiculous he zombie that was coming towards me. Looks like we got a fort over there. There's something shining off in the distance right there. I feel like there's going to be a fair amount of exploration, and rather than... I get a lot of requests for games like Skyrim, but Skyrim, I feel like it's been reasonably overdone, and I don't think it would hold my interest just because I've played it so much. And so I wanted to do a game with free roaming that might be at least a little bit more interesting. Well, we can check out the fort. We can go... There's a note. These notes are remarkably shiny. And attaching LEDs to notes all at a time period. Several among the council are wary of treating with the naturals, but I believe I have convinced them of the necessity, for we cannot assume that Sir Christopher will outfit a resupply fleet with sufficient urgency to ensure it reaches us from England before we have no more need of it. We will starve before spring without succor. Alright, well, I don't see how more suckers would help the situation, but, you know. Uh... Wait, something... There's a shiny over here. Shinies! Bring forth the loot! Habeas Lutus! Reginald Milet, a true gentleman. Okay. My guess is that the villagers aren't going to have made it out of this one intact. That's gonna be my guess. There's like blood dripping down a wall right there. You've unlocked the Fort Henry destination. Oh, we can fast travel. Oh, nice. Well, that's going to be lovely. That seems like it's going to be an incredibly helpful feature. Dear sir or madam, I hope that the bow I gave you has been of reasonable service, but I would encourage you to consider some of my finer wares. I accept coin or barter as you see fit. Please check back from time to time to see what new items I may have acquired. Cordially, John Howe, Merchant. Did it refill my arrows? He said the arrows were free for now. No? Well, how do I get more arrows? Where are those at? Longbow arrows. Oh, they cost money now? Balls. I wonder if the ones back on the beach are free. We've got one tomahawk. I should have tried that out in my panicked state, though. I didn't think about it. I'm going to save up money for a common musket or something, because it feels like a gun would be... Well, knowing what I know about muskets, maybe it wouldn't be that useful, but it seems like a good plan, so that's what I'm going to do. Let's have a look around town and see what there is to see. Suppose we'll look at this Maya's mating barrel, if that's even a word. Drinking from a barrel will restore your health and refill your water skin if you have one. Okay. A small trowel, which is well suited to breaking up hard soil. Okay, so we've collected a trowel. Indian arrows that were most likely intended for the head of a century. Now they're intended for my bag. So we know the arrow stuck in a guard tower and we found a trowel. Okay, so those are going to be in our clues menu. Since the people here no longer have any need of any of their wares, or as far as I know anyways, I'm going to break all the barrels while we're here and see what we can find. Can we go inside houses? No. Alright, so the houses are not available for searching. However... Something appears to be buried here, but the soil is so rocky that it will take more than a trowel to dig it up. Okay, so we need to find a shovel or something suited to heavier digging. Nothing over there. I see a tre- ooh. I thought he was giving me the rock on symbol, right? I thought he was throwing up the devil horns, burned up in one final rock concert, but nope. I shall name you Krusty. Though the figure appears human, it is only ash and ember. Crazy. Suppose we'll read up on the situation. I'm feeling a little bit antsy right now. I'm not sure what to say. According to our prisoner, the Spaniards seek to destroy settlements that might be used for privateering against their treasure fleets and will surely come at us again. We need reinforcements if we are to repel further attacks. Okay, so the place had come under attack by... The English's long-standing rivals. 
the Spanish. The Spanish, the French, and the English were pretty terrible to each other during this time period. They were not at all fans of one another. You can drink from a water skin to restore yourself at any time. Be sure to refill it at open barrels. Oh, nice. And so it appears to have added two little cross marks in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen that I would guess are the charges for our water skin that'll allow us to heal ourselves. More Indian arrows. Either there was a large-scale attack or several smaller skirmishes, and they never bothered to pull the short bow arrows out. We don't have the proper bow to use these arrows, however, so they appear to be going into our inventory and not into our general cache. There's a treasure chest back here. 24 coins. An ornate bell. It appears to be in good condition. It could probably be re re remounted from where it hung. Alright. Collected a bell. That seems like rather large. That seems like a pretty large piece of equipment to be carrying around with us. But then again, magic inventories go. I'm not going to question it. Doesn't appear as though... I'm going to go out on a ledge right now and say that corroborating evidence here, these empty crates were less than full of supplies that they probably needed before they vanished off into Nowheresville. Any more arrows over here? Another ash figure. Hmm. I didn't expect that to work, but I suppose I left him in pieces. I am a heartbreaker. A body breaker, in all honesty. What did we pick up right there? A crude charm of soldiery. Reload muskets, pistols, and crossbows 5% faster. Okay. I mean, that's not really going to benefit us at all since we don't have a gun, but... The graves. Okay, so I guess it just keeps track of the graves that we've seen so far. Coastal path, reminders... And then, I'm not sure how these are distinguished from one another, but we'll keep an eye on them as the game goes along. Kind of peruse as necessary. This guy appears to have been getting mooned from this direction before he went out. It was the giant flaming moon of death. Yet another ash figure. What could these be? Is it really that hard to derive? It very much appears to be a human that was burned. I don't know why main protagonists in video games are always so damn stupid. The Indian king, who they call Werowance, is pleased by our gifts of tools and trinkets and gave us, in return, an abundance of corn and bear meat, which is an excellent victual. Victual. I've never eaten bear before. Bear seems like it might be sort of gamey. Oh. We've replaced the bell, but do we want to ring it? I don't know. I feel like something bad's going to happen when I ring the bell. Like, ding, ding tends to be one of those indicators that it is, in fact, on. And I do not want it to be on. I want it to remain off. But, eh. Oh, hell. That bell's got a pretty long-lasting cadence. I don't even know what to say right now. Yikes. You dug up what appears to be a human eyeball, though it feels more like a stone. It's strangely heavy and warm in your hand. It seems that you could see things that you couldn't before. Are we, like, wearing it on the side of our head? Like an extra optical? We could make, like, a steampunk device out of it. Is there anything in this alleyway before I go any further? I am a completionist, by the way. BT dubs, in case you didn't know. Doesn't appear to be anything back there. Misty figure, you stay right where you are. I have little faith that my bow will be enough to stop you, but stay there. I'll be back. There's things to dig. Dug up a petrified ear. Like the eye that you found, it is heavy and warm. It seems that you can hear things that you couldn't before. God. Slightly grisly. We're assembling our own personal human to fill in for our senses, which I guess have gone... Sort of off kilter. Dug up a petrified tongue. It is too heavy. It too is heavy and warm. It seems you can now speak to those that couldn't hear you before. Ugh.
The Lord Governor has determined that we cannot spare any men to send to Fort Henry, for we are harried constantly by the Naturals, who have grown more hostile towards us for unknown reasons. It looks like that's everything, but let me check to make sure. I want to check, because new stuff has spawned all over the village, so... In the interest of being sure that we've gotten everything along the way, just check every corner, and then we'll see what's going on with this thingy over here. Where is Martha? Who's Martha? My wife. Who are you? I'm Captain William Eastgrove. Where did you last see her? On a hillside. We were sitting together, and I was holding her hand, talking about our son. I shall find her for you if I can. Oh, Christ. I hate to interrupt, but, uh, who are you talking to? I was speaking to a wraith named William Eastgrove. But I see no one. He appeared in the dark when I rang the bell and vanished when daylight returned. In the dark? How can that be? The sun hasn't moved in the sky. Are you certain of what you saw? I couldn't see him until I found this strange eyeball. That is an unsettling discovery, and an odd thing to pick up. I personally find the tongue a bit more unsettling. You didn't lick the wraith, I hope, though I confess I'm suddenly curious what one might taste like. Mostly cotton candy. Who are you? I... I can't remember. I'm sure that I lived here, for this place is familiar, but it's like a dream that I can't quite recall. Do you remember anything? My sister. I've been searching for her, but I, I can't remember her name either. Perhaps she's hiding from the Spaniards, for they seem more beasts than men. Spaniards? I've seen no one but you since I awoke in the forest days ago. I assure you that there are no Spaniards here. Not anymore. They seemed real enough. Like the darkness and the wraith? What did he want of you anyways? He's searching for his wife. I would help you find her, but it is hard to track what one cannot see. And I can't, and I must seek my sister. Please, let me know if you see her. We're twins, so she should be easy to recognize. Where shall I find you if you have news to report? Let us meet in this fort for now. I should also like to learn the outcome of your search for the Wraith's wife. I can't help but worry what's become of her. Very well, then. Listening will lead you to areas of interest. You will find different locations in the normal world versus the other world, so be sure to listen in both. Huh, strangely enough. Oh, I press X to listen? Ooh, we gotta make sure that the headphones are on the right ears, otherwise that'll throw you off. It is going right to left right now, panning. Well, I think this is probably a decent place to break off the episode. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in this first episode of a game that is called Betrayer. I hope to see you all in the future. I hope that you enjoy this series, and I look forward to playing it through with all of you. Take care out there, everybody, and I do.